John, they, they take him, they take him to the temple, uh, and there at the temple, they they use him as a as a testimony. They use him as a as a testimony, as an oppor as an opportunity to to show to others what God had done. You know, so so often people really want to see what God had done. People really want to uh, see the signs, see the wonders. You know, in Jesus' life, Jesus did the miracles, and the miracles is what draw people unto unto Himself. Uh, you remember the story of Nicodemus? You know what fascinated what fascinated you? All can turn your uh, turn your mic, unmute your mic, so you can you can comment. You know what fascinated everyone about, or at least fascinated Nicodemus about Jesus? It was his miracles. That's right. <laughs> it was his. It was. It was his miracles that fascinated him. And so when he came, when he came to Jesus, if you know the story in in Saint John chapter three, he said to Jesus, he said, "I, I want to find out. I want to learn how to do miracles that you are doing." So he was so fascinated to learn about the miracles, the miracles of God. And, and even today, even today in our society, people are still fascinated and want to know more about the, about the miracles of, of God. And, uh, and so we're, you know, we're able to uh, give them that opportunity when we share with them testimonies about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One want to begin our reading at verse number 11 and we're going to read this this whole passage in its in entirety but for those of you that just tuning in with us this is uh the beginning of the apostolic move of god the apostolic move of god this is the beginning of the when the when the apostles are finally commissioned to do what they learn from Jesus. When the apostles are commissioned to go and to make disciples out of man, this is when the disciples are commissioned. Jesus told them that when he leaves, Jesus told them that they would be able to do greater things. That's right, greater things than what Jesus did on earth. And, and each one of us can do greater things than what Jesus has done, greater things. And, 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 and so, you know, I think sometimes the Lord sits back and says, what are you waiting on? I'm waiting, I'm waiting on you to do greater things. I'm, I'm waiting on you uh, to, uh, to, to speak to uh, mountains and see mountains move. I'm waiting on you to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I'm waiting on you to, to, to speak uh, things into existence. He's waiting on us because he's already given us uh, the power to do so. So these early apostles, they were, uh, they just believed God. I mean, they, they just believed God. Of course, they, uh, they, they hung out with Jesus uh, and saw it all for themselves, but they, they genuinely, they believed in and, and when they spoke it, they, they, they had great confidence that it was going to happen. And so uh, notice in, in the, the last passage of the scripture, before what we're about to read now, they, they snatched them up and they said, uh, you know, get up, you know, get up and walk. They had no doubt that when this, this beggar would take his first step, they had no doubt that he would walk. They had no doubt that he would walk. And that's the kind of faith that we want to have. That's the kind of faith that we want to have in, in Jesus. But, but now as we, as we, uh, as we open, up, open up the scriptures, and uh, uh, beginning at verse 11 of chapter 3, we, we now see the, uh, the apostles with a, uh, uh, bringing into the temple somebody that has a testimony the, the scripture lead us to understand that that it was 
it was it was common that the beggar would be brought to the temple gates. It was a common thing that he would be brought to the temple gate. So it suggests that those in the temple had seen this beggar numerous of times and per perhaps had dropped some shekels in his cup, uh, as you know, as what we do uh, with beggars. But look at verse, look at verse number one. I want everyone to get to uh, Acts chapter three. Uh, look at verse number eleven. Look at verse number eleven. It says, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colony, Colonnade. Um, again, I, 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 I want to believe that it's, it's not that, uh, not that the, uh, the, the beggar was not completely healed, but he was just learning how to get his posture and get his position. So, so he held on, he Mommy. held on to them. So the, 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 the people, the people were amazed. Why, why do you think the people were so amazed? You can un unmute your mic. Why do you think the people were so amazed? Because there was something they had never before. It was something well, that they something that they had never seen before. That's a good one. Yeah, um, that's true. Minister Spalding. Also, also, because the beggar was in that stage for a very long time, his appearance of being lame was a cost, customary thing for them to see. And it's a customary way of him was to be in their present. So when this notable miracle took, it, it, it's supernatural. It's a strange thing. It's phenomenal. And it blowed the human understanding because that was something unexpectedly done to this man. We never expect these things. We never expect to see him walk. So it, it, it was just a miracle. It was just a miracle and it was just an odd to them. Very good. Just a, a real practical uh, comment that I think we can draw from this, that how often do we uh, walk past individuals that are paralyzed, that are sick, that are lame, and, uh, and we fail to alter up a prayer of healing, alter up a, pair, a prayer of, 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 of deliverance for them. And so all of these um, all of these uh, spiritual people, I'm gonna call them, or religious folks, they they pass him by at the temple gates. They pass him by uh, for for perhaps many many years, uh, and many of them probably have dropped money into his cup. But but it but it took Peter and John to stop and to speak healing over his life speak healing over his life. So, so we see here in verse, verse 11 that they, uh, that they took him with them. They took him with, him, with them to the temple. And uh, look at verse 12. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? You know, uh, you, you, you would think that, um, if we truly believe in the scriptures, that it should not amaze us or surprise us when God tells us in his word that he's going to do a miracle. Uh, but uh, so, so he speaks to these religious folks and he, 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 said, he raises the question, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at, uh, at us as if by our own power or godliness, we have made this man walk. Uh, what is he telling us here? He's telling us that, uh, that uh, it, 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 it is not through them, it is through the power of God that healing take place. In, in essence, they did not want to get the credit. 
They did not want them to appear that they were the powerhouse, but they wanted them to understand that this man was healed because of the power of Jesus Christ. So, so he says, uh, it, if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk. Look at verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disown him by you you disown him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. In essence, they are now speaking, Peter is now speaking to those that crucify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those that didn't believe that he was truly the Son of God. Those that uh, did not believe when he told them, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he, and he told them, he said, you are, the one, you are the ones, you are the ones that disowned him and, uh, and took his life. Verse 14, you disowned the holy and the righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. you. He said, you killed the author of life, but God raised him, God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. What what message you think he was conveying with all of that? What message? What message you think he was conveying to them concerning that? What message? Come on, jump in, folks. What message? Pastor, I have a question before yeah. we get to that. Was there was there any indication that Peter and John had been there before? had been to that location before, the temple? No, uh, because um, they, were, uh, they were at this point, uh, they, had been, they had been commissioned uh, to go and make disciples out of all men. They had been, they had been commissioned uh, to go and, and spread the word abroad. And, and these, indiv these, these individuals that they were ministering to had, um, had heard about Jesus and had seen him and had been, been around him. But I, I, can't, I can't draw you to a point in scripture where they were, uh, where they had been to this gate called beautiful. I, I, can't, I can't think of a reference of scripture that can point us to them being at this particular place uh, before there are temples, there are temples all over the place. But I okay. can't give you a specific uh, passage of scripture. If it, if there is one, it would you know be found somewhere in the in the in the gospels where they were there uh, before. Okay, I got you. But uh, but. But but Peter was building them up uh, in 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 these these passages that we just read. He's building building them up because they now have seen with their own eyes a miracle, a miracle that was unbelievable, unbelievable, and uh, and still today the world the world is looking for miracles. One thing about this world that you can you can uh, give it a little bit of credit for is that the world is searching. The world is searching uh, for answers. There are things in, that's happening in this world that does not connect. That is that that uh, folks are looking for answers, and oftentimes when they see with their own eyes great miracles, it brings them to the saving knowledge of the of, of the truth. Look at verse 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that, that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all 
C. So the, they were, uh, uh, Peter was using uh, this miracle as a, uh, as a visual aid to, to prove to them those that disbelieve of the power of Jesus Christ, those that uh, disbelieve of, of the message of Jesus Christ. Again, it is, it is, it is miracles that, that draws people to the saving knowledge of the truth. Look at verse 17. Now, fellow Israelites, he says, I know that you acted in ignorance as did your leaders. Meaning he's telling them, you did not know who you were killing. You did not know uh, the person that you were shouting, crucify him. You did not know when you were stoning him, when you were when he was being whipped and, and beaten to a bloody pole, you did not know what you were doing. Because if you, if you had known what you were doing, you would not have done it. So he says, uh, you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying, that his Messiah would suffer. Again, as a, he, 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 it, was, it was prophesied. We find in the book of, book of, of Isaiah, we find in, in numerous of, 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 of writings from God's major and minor prophets where they, they prophesied that Jesus would come, that he would be wounded, Isaiah said, for what? for our transgression. He would be bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace would be upon him. And this is where we claim our healing. By, by his stripes, we are and were healed. So he's saying that this Messiah, that he would suffer, that the prophet said that, look at, look at verse 19. One thing I want to want to say about the, about the scriptures that, that's very important is that there is there is unity in the scriptures, meaning uh, you can look at the scriptures and you can find cross references, meaning uh, something that was said in the Old Testament, you can see it referenced again in the New Testament which represents unity, which represents unity. And then he goes on to say, repent then, by the way, who is, who is speaking? Who is speaking? Just want to see if you guys are uh, following. Who is speaking here? Who, say, who is saying, repent? Someone said John, someone said Peter. The answer Peter, is Peter. 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 All righty, all righty. <laughs> so Peter says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and that time of refreshing may come from the Lord. You know, still, even now, when we repent, God refreshes us as he did as he did here, when we repent. So he says, repent for your time of re re refreshing uh, may come from the Lord and that he may send the Messiah, that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Ver verse 21 says, heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. Heaven must receive him, that Jesus had to go. And you know, there, there are people that, that, that you may hear saying, only if Jesus was here right now. If Jesus was here right now, there would not be any COVID-19, you know. If Jesus was here right now, there would not be so many hospitals. If Jesus was here right now, 
there be there will not be so many problems that we deal with in 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 life if only Jesus was here. But actually, the fact that Jesus is not here right now, not here in bodily form right now, is a blessing. Can anyone tell me why is a blessing that Jesus left? Why is it a blessing that Jesus left? Good question. So that he can do many places. If he's here, he can only do one place at a time. Very good. So the the Jesus Jesus had to leave so that he could release the what we call the Comforter, the 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 Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at the same time, meaning multiple places at the same time, same time. He can be everywhere at the same time, which is which is why the Holy why Jesus had to get out of here. And then Jesus had already spoken over us and told us that we would be able to do greater things, greater things than what he's done. So he sent the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit job is, a, is to serve as a, our comforter. The Holy Spirit job is to, is, a, is to serve as our counselor. The Holy Spirit job is to empower us. The Holy Spirit job is to allow us to do supernatural things through Jesus Christ. So he sent the comforter. So Jesus had to get out so that the comforter could be released over the face of the entire world. Because if Jesus was on this earth right now, he could not be in Miami and be in Pembroke Pines at the same time. So it was a good thing that the disciples, they were, they were hurt when Jesus said, I'm going to have to leave you. I'm going to have to leave you. And, and little did they know that Jesus leaving was for their benefit. Jesus leaving was for our benefit. Jesus had to go to heaven. Verse 21, heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. If you ever had a chance to read the, the last book of the Bible, the, 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 the prophet John says, the apostle John says, at the end of time, that time will be no more. At the end of time, when, when Jesus fixed everything and, uh, and we see our loved ones that, that no longer have the privilege uh, to, to, to be in this place called heaven, they in hell, the scripture says, uh, leads us to understand that when sorrow hit us, and we and we desire to cry. Jesus said he, that he will personally do what? <laughs> he will personally do what? Dry I can't up, hear, huh? Dry up your tears. Just that's right. Wipe away the tears. Oh, from your, oh, that's that's precious. That's precious. That's that's precious. Meaning, you know. He's going to be right there with you. He's going to be right there with you. And that's why it, be, it, be, it behooves all of us to uh, share with our loved ones and those in our sphere of influences and those that we come in contact with to turn their life over to, to, to Jesus Christ. But because when he come back again, which is the scripture is making, is making reference to the second coming, that Jesus is coming back again. The, the scripture says he's coming back. Someone say, when? When is he coming back? Can someone, no. can someone no. out there tell me when is he coming back? I want to know you when know, he's coming. Huh? It says, it says you don't know the day or the hour. Yeah. Okay. You but no, he said just be ready. That's right. But we got some brilliant, we got some brilliant folks on this line tonight. 
Any, yes. any <laughs> anyone can tell me when he's coming back. <laughs> oh no. I want somebody to tell me. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you right now when he's coming back. Get 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 ready. Jesus is coming back soon. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, okay. He's coming back soon. However, as Brother Bobby mentioned, no man knows the actual day or the hour. In fact, there have been many theologians that have lost all of their credibility because they stepped out and put a date on it. You know, I was reading about someone doing... Uh, during uh, the, uh, the, the, the 2000, the millennia, the 2000, and they were saying all types of things will not work and the Lord was coming back and they added up all of the dates and added up a bunch of things and it came down to 2000, year 2000. Well, year 2000 has come and gone and we're still here. You know, since I've been a Christian, they've been telling me Jesus is coming back real soon. But let me give you another thought. The Bible says that uh, a day to the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. When Jesus said, I'm coming soon, he, he has his own mathematics. He has his own mathematics. You see, to us, one plus one is two. But to, to, to Jesus, zero plus zero can be a thousand. So he's not revealed to us uh, exact, the exact <laughs> day and the time. But what he did tell us, he said, I want you to occupy. I want you to remain busy until I return, until I return again. Look at, look at <laughs> verse, verse, verse 22. Verse 22. Hannah, I want you to read that verse 22, if you got it there. Verse 22. Yeah. For, go ahead. For example. Oh. For Moses said. Uh, for Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Okay, so, so again, it was, it was further prophesied that, uh, that, that a prophet will come and bring forth the word. And we know that many of the minor, many of the major prophets even John the Baptist, John the Baptist, uh, te from technically, from a, 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 a biblical standpoint, from a theological standpoint, John the Baptist was actually one of the last prophets. That's right. He was one <laughs> of the last prophets. And, and he prophesied, you know, that there was one coming, John prophesied, said there is one coming whom shoelaces I'm unworthy to even tie. Now, you know, getting down and tying someone's shoes, it seems like a, 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 a fairly humble act. But, but John says that whoever gets the privilege to even tie his shoes is very, is very special. So it goes on, so the scripture goes on here in, in verse 23. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. What we have, what we have today, we have the privilege to have the word of God. It is the spoken word of God. The scripture says, holy men wrote while they were inspired <laughs> by the word of God. When you, when we read the word of God, we read the word of God with an understanding that is God speaking to us. This is God's prophetic. This is God's word. This is, this is almost as if God was sitting next to you speaking 
it, speaking it, speaking it. And he, and, he, and he goes on, look at verse 22. Indeed, beginning with Samuel, all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days and are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your father, your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all people on earth will be blessed. Have you ever uh, uh, in your <laughs> prayers said to the Lord, Lord God, uh, uh, give me, uh, 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 present to me some of the blessings that you bestowed upon my forefather, Abraham, that I'm entitled to, I'm entitled to. Did you know that the, that the, the blessings of Abraham are, are treasures in heaven that is made available to the people of God? Uh, those, uh, uh, the, those that uh, claim to be connected to Abraham because the, the scripture speaks of Abraham's offspring being blessed, being blessed and, 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 and uh, being blessed in many special ways. Look at verse 26. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So Peter, Peter gives them this message. Peter gives them this message about Jesus Christ, the one that they did acknowledge while he was on the face of this earth. Jesus Christ, the, the, the one that they, they, they took out in ignorance. But he tells them that the message that he had spoken to them was a prophetic message that they must adhere to. They must adhere to it. You know, the worst thing we can do is not listen to the word of God and, and grieve, grieve the spirit of God because the Bible, the Bible tells us that the spirit of God will not always strive with man. So, so you know, when, when the spirit of God is speaking to you and encouraging you to do something, it behooves you to do it because while the spirit of God is on you, if you're not obeying what God wants, wants you to do, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. I don't know how many times that I have said that, you know, I really should have done what was on my heart, but I, but I chose not to do it. And uh, because you learned at the end, it was, it was truly God speaking to you and encouraging you to move forward and to do something different. But you chose, you chose not to listen to God. You chose not to listen to God. So, so again, what we just read, we, we, we see here Peter's conversation. It is almost like a sermon. Peter's conversation to those onlookers that saw this man on a regular basis that were, that were uh, lame and crippled. And they saw him for themselves. They, they saw him who had been healed through the ministry of Peter and John. And so that was their testimony. So little did this crippled man know that, that God would, had been setting him up all of his life to be a testimony, to be used as a testimony that would ultimately, ultimately bring these Israelites to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so often, you know, in our trials and our tribulations, and, and, um, and some of us on this line, we have gone through a lot of stuff. We've dealt with a lot of stuff in, in our lifetime, but God is using it and will use it as a <laughs> testimony. And so here we see the life, here we see the life of this beggar now being used as a, as a testimony 
that will ultimately bring these individuals to the saving knowledge of the truth. Clearly, it was used to point them to Jesus Christ. It was used to point them to that the power that, that Peter and John exercised was power that came from Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ himself. So it's incumbent upon every single one of us on uh, this line this evening to utilize our power, the power that God has given us, the power that allows us to heal the sick, to raise the dead. You know, if you're ever somewhere and someone dies, don't be afraid to say in the name of Jesus, I command you to rise from your death, your uh, your your deathbed in Jesus' name. You know, don't be don't be afraid, and uh, and if they get up, don't run out of the room. <laughs> just start praising, just start praising God, because the Word of God says that we can do that. The Word of God says that we can lay hands on the sick and see the sick recover. That includes everyone. It doesn't just, it doesn't say that's up to the pastor. It doesn't say that's up to the deacons. It doesn't say that's uh, up to uh, leaders in the church, but that power has been made available to every single one of us. And this is why Jesus had to leave. Jesus had to leave so that we could be empowered. We could be empowered to do some great and mighty things for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So I want, uh, want to throw a few questions at you as we uh, prepare, uh, prepare to close out. Uh, this is a, 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 a very simple one and one that I did you know, speak about. Um, why did... Peter and John, why did Peter and John pray for and believe this man's healing? Why? What, what, what possessed them to do something different? All of these other religious people have passed by. What possessed them to do something different from everyone else? I, I, well, I'm of the opinion that since uh, all these people had passed through the gate of beautiful and saw this man all these all this time, or many many times, um, I guess he felt that this was the right moment to exercise, or or that God felt that this was a great moment for him to exercise that power that had been bestowed upon him, that he had. Uh, uh, been preparing Peter for so many years and this was the opportune time because all these people who had gone through the temple had said had, had uh, um, seen this guy begging yeah even even the even the priests who came by and uh, had seen him so I guess this was a good time for him to do it and to show everybody yeah. what the power of God could do yeah well, well, one one thing that we're all guilty of, we we pass situations. You know, and again, I'm I'm not implying that you know every time you see a beggar, you go in your pocket and uh, and and drop some money in the cup. But I am saying that as we see needs, we don't necessarily have to go in our pocket, but we can alter up a prayer for those individuals that we come in. That we come in contact with, and 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 still believe God to restore them and to and to allow them to recover. What what is interesting about Peter and John? What they did is what they were they were accustomed to seeing Jesus do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, Jesus Jesus never walked past a need and left it unmet. He never did that. So Peter and John did what, and I hate to call it what came to them naturally, but how they were taught. They were taught by Jesus 
that if you see a need, you address it, you deal with it. And that's exactly, Jesus, Jesus did not go around uh, handing out money. <laughs> he, wasn't a, he wasn't a sugar daddy, a <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> he didn't go around just handing out money. But he, he, he went around doing things that others would not, could not, could not do. And others uh, could not do what they did because they had the power of God. But very, very, very good. Anyone else want to comment on that? Anyone else want to comment on that? Any other comments on that? Okay. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that they're just, you know, like that's. That's what they um, they were trained to do in terms of um, spreading the word and you know doing what they were called to do as disciples. So it, they were just um, you know ministering to others and you know like you said carrying out the word of the Lord and doing what they saw that their master did. And that's what we are called to do as well, you know. Very good. So, so, so as, as we see needs, we, um, even if you're doing a drive by, you're driving through something, we need to be encouraged to pray. Um, again, when I hear, when I hear ambulance, I just pray, Lord, be with them, Lord, touch heal them. When I see cops um, um, flying by the dozen, I'm, I'm praying for whatever that situation is. We must not, I think if there's anything that we can take from, uh, from what we've learned uh, today, this evening, is that we must not pass by situations and not do anything. You know, one thing that we all can do, and that's pray. We can all pray uh, for uh, for someone. I, I remember back in the back in the days, and it's not it's not uh, good to do now. But uh, but I used to pick up. I used to travel from uh, North Carolina to Miami, and uh, was just just quite quite lonely. So uh, I would uh, pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> And I would, uh, I would preach to them the whole while, the whole while, and they were, they were the best company, and um, ran into some good, ran into some good people. You know, some of them didn't smell the best or whatever, but I just rolled down the windows and kept on preaching. But it gave me, it gave me some company because I had 12, 13 hour drive uh, continuously, and. Um, and led a few of them to the Lord and uh, prayed with uh, many of them while I'm not encouraging any of you uh, to go out and find yourself a hitchhiker. Uh, but I would say that as we pass by situations, I'm not even encouraging you to stop, but at least pray, at least pray for them because your prayer, your prayer may be the prayer that would allow them to get the breakthrough that they are very much, very much in need of. Any other, any other comments, any other final comments, final thoughts, anyone give any final comments, final thoughts, beautiful, beautiful story of, of, of this man that was, had been lame, uh, more than likely had been lame from, from his birth, uh, now is able to walk, is able, able, able to walk. Any other any other comments? Any other comments? Observations? Go right ahead. Love to hear from each one of you, even if it's just an amen. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? Just want to get your get your comments. Yep. Anyone else? Okay, Hannah, give us some give us a summation. Give us a summation of what we what we discussed this evening. Tell us a little bit about what we discussed this evening. Yeah, what we what you remember, what you can recall. Okay, Jared, you're next. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I like how um, uh, like they were like they were they were like praising them about the miracle that happened, mm -hmm. but they told them that it was God. Very good. Very good. Very good. They were giving them. They were ready to give them. They're ready to give them, and, and they thought that they were some superpower. And they quickly, they quickly gave uh, credit to Jesus. Okay, Hannah, you're, you're on now. You're on. I like the verse. Go ahead. You got to speak up loud. Speak up loud because I can't hear you. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Expound on it. Expound on it. Expound on it. Expound? Yeah. Time of refreshing. Time of refreshing. Time of refreshing comes after you do what? Okay. Repent. Okay. Very good. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone else got some final final thoughts? We're about to ramp. We're about to ramp down. Uh, folks, we're about to ramp down. We're running out of time here. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? All righty, we're gonna uh, we're gonna close out. Gonna close out in prayer again. Thank you so much. It's good to good to uh, see Sister Nancy, Sister N Sister Nicole, uh, brother uh, brother brother Bobby here, uh, uh, brother Omar Omar Spalding was with us, uh, Sister uh, Sandra Sandra Gibson. Uh, Hannah, Jared, Christine, and company. And so we thank God for each one of you. Again, want to continue to pray. Um, I heard from uh, Pastor Eric, and they are still uh, recovering and uh, continue to seek all of our, all of our prayers. Uh, there are many others that uh, I've heard from that are out of the out of the hospitals and uh, we thank god we thank god for that again we want to encourage you all to uh be 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 careful out there uh pat, practice uh some good health and health and safety measures to ensure that you are not in not not in harm's way and that's all we can do and then after that people of god we just believe god amen we just believe God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. We, we, we just believe God. After you've done all you can do, you just, you know, you just trust God. Uh, you know, there's all kind of movements out there now that don't want to wear masks and uh, just want to hang out business as usual. And uh, and so, you know, there's a there's a challenge when uh, you you're around people that just feel like it's just business as usual this is, this is a serious spirit out there in our world if jesus walked uh, out uh, in this world with us today jesus would simply call it a spirit of infirmity a spirit of infirmity uh, that's what jesus would call it and we know this particular one is called uh coronavirus it's, it's a spirit and we, on a daily basis, throughout our day, we need to continue to come against it in the, come against it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just a, a few more comments, and we'll uh, close out in prayer. Uh, we're uh, we're putting together uh, a communion communion package and some uh, anointing oil, and so we are going to be having a special. Uh, communion services. We're gonna more than likely start doing those on a Sunday Sunday evenings. Communion services, and we're gonna have a special service where we are going to teach you how to anoint yourself. Amen. Teach you how to anoint yourself. So we're gonna put in the mail some uh, communion uh, communion packs with the with the uh with the bread and the juice as well as some uh, anointing oil and uh and we want to make sure you have a supply at home so when we do our communion our virtual uh communion services you'll have 
you know, you'll have that communion cup and that bread there and be able to participate uh, as we do our communion. And again, the anointing oil, which would, uh, we're uh, going to be providing that would be prayed over. We're going to believe God that whatever that oil touch would do something supernatural, healing, deliverance, whatever the need, whatever the need might be. And a little devotion, a little devotion of peace that we'll be putting in the mail. We'll either put it in the mail or drop it at the door if you're nearby the nearby the uh, church location. We'll probably drop yours at the uh, at your front door or the others will just mail to you. And so within about a week or so, we are going to have this special communion, special communion service. I think it'll be like right around that first that first Sunday in, uh, in, in August. And then that will be followed by a special, uh, special anointing service where we want to uh, pray over everyone, we want to get the whole church on, uh, on Zoom. And we want to pray for every single person on the line. So that's coming, going to be coming at you real soon. So we're going to close out in prayer again. Want to remember, uh, if there's any special prayer request right now, I uh, want you to turn on your mics and let us know uh, who that person is that we need to be in prayer for. If you can do that real quick, and then we'll uh, prepare to close out. Anyone, any special, any special prayer request? Anybody need a, a supernatural miracle? You need a, a group of folks to touch and agree with you. You go ahead and turn on your uh, turn off your mic. Go right ahead, please. You go ahead and turn on your mic. Anyone? Yeah, I would like for the church to pray for my uncle who is, uh, Clinton, who is uh, still recovering. Uh, he's home now um, on oxygen, but uh, at least he's home and in good spirits. And my aunt Clara, who is also expecting to come out in another month, she says, and She's doing well, but still would, you know, enjoy or would like to have a church pray for her as Amen. well as my mom. Amen. 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 So we have Aunt Claire, Aunt Alice Ann, and Uncle Clinton. Uh, we want to remember them. Any, anyone else? Anyone else? Go right ahead real quickly here. Any? Anyone else? Amen. So we want to want to remember want to remember them in 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 our prayers. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? As well as your mom. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was uh, hoping to hoping to get her on on the Zoom at some point. I have to probably go over there and supervise it or something to get her. <laughs> get her familiar with it. I think once we get the app on her phone, she, she should be able to figure, figure it out from there as long as she doesn't take it off of, take it off of mute. Uh, that'd, be a, that'd be a big problem for us. Okay, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this gathering uh, uh, this evening. We thank you, Lord God, for the story of Peter and John and the, uh, the, the beggar that was healed. And we thank you for the message, Lord God, that it provides to us, where that it is useful in encouraging us, Lord God, to uh, not be afraid to uh, uh, pray for those, Lord God, that we come in contact with, that we see are having challenges or are or, 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 or at a rock bottom in their life and, and need help. Encourage us, Lord God, to Keep them in prayer, Lord God, in prayer. Lord God, we pray this morning, this evening, for Auntie Alice Ann and Aunt, uh, Aunt Claire and Uncle Clinton and my dear mother. And Lord God, we pray for the entire church family. We pray that you will bless us, that you keep us. We pray that your grace shine upon us, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you grant us the, the deep desires of our heart, Lord God, perhaps there are some on this line to this evening, Lord God, that need a supernatural touch from you. Lord God, we pray that you will grant it this evening in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we bless your name. Allow us, Lord God, to have a beautiful night of rest, 
allow us to meditate in your presence. And we thank you, Lord God, for all of the praise reports, Lord God, with those coming out of the hospital and those that have finally gotten their breakthrough and those that have been delivered. We thank you, Lord God. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And the people of God said, you got to turn your mic on. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Amen. You have to click call.